One day Jesus was teaching, and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, They went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say, Get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up. Take your mat and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, We have seen remarkable things today. In this blessed season of waiting on the Lord, waiting to celebrate His birth and waiting for His return, it is good for us to remember what He taught us in the fifth chapter of Luke. He showed how forgiveness and healing are connected. As we wait during this Advent, let us consider how important it is for us to have repentant hearts to live with repentant hearts. In this way, we can walk holy and with purity before our God. We can live with hope and great expectancy that our Lord Jesus will forgive and heal and return. You know, many Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting close by that day when Jesus forgave and healed the paralytic but they didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. They were still waiting. I'm so thankful that I know our Redeemer lives. How tragic it is that so many in our world do not have that knowledge nor that hope. But because we do, let us live so that the world can see the light and love of the Messiah within us. Our Messiah has come in your presence. There is nothing you cannot do. Father God, every word in Scripture points to the gift of hope that we have because of Christ Jesus. The Christmas story wasn't the beginning of that message of hope because the Old Testament is full of glimpses of your plan to redeem your people and restore them into a relationship with you. But we can truly begin to see and understand just how great your love for us is when we read the story of Jesus' birth in Scripture. Help us to see that you are with us. Nothing is too difficult too messy, or too dirty for you. Jesus came to give us the gift of eternal life through salvation that only you, our Heavenly Father, can give when we believe in your Son, 
repent of our sins and confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior. That first Christmas, you gave us the gift of hope wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. Thank you, Father, for your immeasurable gift. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Almighty God, you pour on us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, Hallelujah. now and forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, you do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God, and awesome is your